Queen Elizabeth II Queen Elizabeth II was the longest reigning monarch in British history, sitting on the throne for 71 years. She was succeeded by King Charles III in 2022. Nineteen twenty six to twenty twenty two, latest news, one year since her death. On the first anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's death, King Charles shared an unreleased photo of the late Queen. In marking the first anniversary of Her Late Majesty's death and my accession, we recall with great affection her long life, devoted service, and all she meant to so many of us, he said in a statement. Additionally, Prince William and Princess Kate attended a private church service in Wales to commemorate her life, and Prince Harry visited the chapel at Windsor Castle, where the Queen is buried. Planning for a memorial to Elizabeth is underway. The targeted unveiling is 2026, the year she would have turned 100. Who was Queen Elizabeth II? Queen Elizabeth II became Queen of the United Kingdom on February 6, 1952, at age 25 and was crowned on June 2, 1953. She was the mother of Prince Charles, who ascended to the throne after her death, as well as the grandmother of Princes William and Harry. As the longest-serving monarch in British history, she tried to make her reign more modern and sensitive to a changing public while maintaining traditions associated with the crown. Elizabeth died on September 8, 2022, at age 96. Quick Facts Full name, Elizabeth Alexander Mary. Born, April 21, 1926. Died, September 8, 2022. Birthplace, London, England, United Kingdom. Parents, King George VI and Queen Mother Elizabeth. Spouse, Prince Philip. Children, King Charles III, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. Astrological sign, Taurus. Early Life and Family Tree Queen Elizabeth II was born Princess Elizabeth Alexander Mary on April 21, 1926, in London. Her parents were then known as the Duke and Duchess of York. Prince Albert, later known as King George VI, was the second son of Queen Mary and King George V. Her mother was Lady Elizabeth Bowes-Lyon. Elizabeth had ties with most of the monarchs in Europe. Her British ancestors include Queen Victoria, ruled 1837 to 1901, and King George III, ruled 1760 to 1820. At the time of her birth, most people didn't realize Elizabeth would someday become the Queen of the United Kingdom. Nicknamed Lilibet, she got to enjoy the first decade of her life with all the privileges of being a royal without the pressures of being the heir apparent. Elizabeth's father and mother divided their time between a home in London and Royal Lodge, the family's home on the grounds of Windsor Great Park. Elizabeth and her younger sister, Margaret, were educated at home by tutors. Academic courses included French, mathematics, and history, along with dancing, singing, and art lessons. With the outbreak of World War II in 1939, Elizabeth and her sister largely stayed out of London, having been relocated to Windsor Castle. From there she made the first of her famous radio broadcasts in 1940, with this particular speech reassuring the children of Britain who had been evacuated from their homes and families. The 14-year-old princess, showing her calm and firm personality, told them that in the end, all will be well, for God will care for us and give us victory and peace. Elizabeth soon started taking on other public duties, appointed colonel-in-chief of the Grenadier Guards by her father. Elizabeth made her first public appearance inspecting the troops in 1942. She also began to accompany her parents on official visits within Britain. In 1945, Elizabeth joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service to help in the war effort. She trained side-by-side -side with other British women to be an expert driver and mechanic. While her volunteer work only lasted a few months, it offered Elizabeth a glimpse into a different, non-royal world. She had another vivid experience outside of the monarchy when she and Margaret were allowed to mingle anonymously among the citizenry on victory in Europe Day. Ascension to the Crown and Coronation When Elizabeth's grandfather King George V died in 1936, his eldest son, Elizabeth's uncle, became King Edward VIII. 
Edward, however, was in love with American divorcee Wallace Simpson and had to choose between the crown and his heart. In the end, Edward chose Simpson and abdicated the crown. The event changed the course of Elizabeth's life, making her the heir presumptive to the British crown. Her father was crowned King George VI in 1937, taking on the name George to emphasize continuity with his father. Her mother became Queen Elizabeth. Fifteen years later, the monarchy changed hands again when King George died. The younger Elizabeth assumed the responsibilities of the ruling monarch on February 6, 1952. At that point, the 25-year-old became Queen Elizabeth II, and her mother became Queen Mother. Elizabeth was crowned on June 2, 1953, in Westminster Abbey, at the age of 27. For the first time ever, the coronation ceremony was broadcast on television, allowing people from across the globe to witness the pomp and spectacle of the event. Husband Prince Philip Elizabeth married her distant cousin Philip Mountbatten, a surname adopted from his mother's side, on November 20, 1947, at London's Westminster Abbey. Elizabeth first met Philip, son of Prince Andrew of Greece, when she was only 13. She was smitten with him from the start. The two kept in touch over the years and eventually fell in love. They made an unusual pair. Elizabeth was quiet and reserved, while Philip was boisterous and outspoken. Her father, King George, was hesitant about the match because, while Mountbatten had ties to both the Danish and Greek royal families, he didn't possess great wealth and was considered by some to have a rough personality. At the time of their wedding, Great Britain was still recovering from the ravages of World War II, and Elizabeth collected clothing coupons to get fabric for her gown. The family took on the name Windsor, a move pushed by her mother and Prime Minister Winston Churchill that caused tension with her husband. In 1960, she reversed course, issuing orders that her descendants who didn't carry royal titles or needed last names for legal purposes such as weddings would use the surname Mountbatten Windsor. Over the years, Philip inspired numerous public relations headaches with his off-the-cuff, controversial comments and rumors of possible infidelities. Philip died on April 9, 2021, at age 99. Days later, Prince Andrew told the media, Queen Elizabeth described his death as having left a huge void in her life. She had previously said he was her strength and stay. Children Elizabeth and Philip wasted no time in producing an heir. Their son Charles was born in 1948, the year after their wedding, and their daughter, Anne, arrived in 1950. As queen, Elizabeth had two more children, sons Andrew and Edward, in 1960 and 1964, respectively. King Charles III In 1969, Elizabeth officially made Charles her successor by granting him the title of Prince of Wales. Hundreds of millions of people tuned in to see the ceremony on television. In 1981, Charles, then 32, wed 19-year-old Diana Spencer, who became known as Princess Diana. The wedding drew enormous crowds in the streets of London, and millions watched the proceedings on television. Public opinion of the monarchy was especially strong at that time. Later, rumors surfaced that he was pressured into the marriage by his family. Now King Charles III, he is married to Queen Camilla. Princess Anne Princess Anne began working as a member of the royal family when she was 18 in 1969 and continues today. She is also heavily involved in charity work. A noted equestrian, and competed in the 1976 Summer Olympics in Montreal. Her mother opened the games that year, and the rest of the royal family traveled to support Anne. Previously married to Captain Mark Phillips, she and her current husband, Timothy Lawrence, wed in 1992. Prince Andrew Andrew was the first child born to a reigning monarch in more than 100 years. In 1979, he joined the British Royal Navy, became a helicopter pilot, and served during the Falkland War in the early 1980s. He became the Duke of York after marrying Sarah Ferguson, though the couple later divorced. Following scandal, Andrew stepped back from public duties in his royal capacity in 2019, a decision that was made permanent in 2022. Prince Edward The Queen's youngest child, Edward, worked in theatre and television production for many years, 
at one point through his own production company. Since 2002, he has worked full-time supporting his mother and now brother. Edward is married to Sophie Rhys Jones. He became the Duke of Edinburgh, a title previously held by his father, in March 2023. Grandchildren and great-grandchildren Queen Elizabeth had eight grandchildren and was great-grandmother to twelve in her lifetime. Her most well-known grandchildren are Charles and Diana's sons, Prince William, who became second in line to the throne at his birth in 1982, and Prince Harry, born in 1984. Elizabeth emerged as a devoted grandmother to her grandsons. Prince William has said that she offered invaluable support and guidance as he and Kate Middleton planned their 2011 wedding. In addition to Princes William and Harry, the Queen's other grandchildren are, Peter Phillips and Zara Tyndall, born to Princess and Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie of York, born to Prince Andrew, and Lady Louise Windsor and James, Viscount Severn, born to Prince Edward. Peter is Elizabeth's oldest grandchild, he was born in 1977, four years before his sister and five years before Prince William. William and Kate have three children, who are Elizabeth's great-grandchildren. The Prince and Princess of Wales welcomed Prince George Alexander Lewis in July 2013, Princess Charlotte Elizabeth Diana in May 2015, and Prince Louis Arthur Charles in April 2018. All three are currently in the line of succession directly after their father. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, and his wife, Meghan Markle gave the Queen two more great-grandchildren with the birth of their son, Prince Archie Harrison Mountbatten-Windsor, and daughter, Princess Lilibet Diana Mountbatten-Windsor, in May 2019 and June 2021, respectively. Elizabeth's other great-grandchildren include Savannah Phillips, Isla Phillips, Mia Tyndall, Lena Tyndall, August Brooksbank. Reign. Elizabeth's long and mainly peaceful reign was marked by vast changes in her people's lives, in her country's power, how Britain is viewed abroad, and how the monarchy is regarded and portrayed. As a constitutional monarch, Elizabeth didn't weigh in on political matters, nor did she reveal her political views. However, she conferred regularly with her prime ministers. When Elizabeth became queen, post-war Britain still had a substantial empire, dominions, and dependencies. However, during the 1950s and 1960s, many of these countries achieved independence, and the British Empire evolved into the Commonwealth of Nations. Elizabeth II thus made visits to other countries as head of the Commonwealth and a representative of Britain, including a groundbreaking trip to Germany in 1965. She became the first British monarch to make a state visit there in more than five decades. During the 1970s and 1980s, Elizabeth continued to travel extensively. In 1973, she attended the Commonwealth Conference in Ottawa, Canada, and, in 1976, traveled to the United States for the 200th anniversary celebration of America's independence from Britain. More than a week later, she was in Montreal to open the Summer Olympics. In 1979, she traveled to Kuwait, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman, which garnered international attention and widespread respect. In 1982, Elizabeth worried about her second son, Prince Andrew, who served as a helicopter pilot in the British Royal Navy during the Falklands War. Britain went to war with Argentina over the Falkland Islands, a clash that lasted for several weeks. While more than 250 British soldiers died in the conflict, Prince Andrew returned home safe and well, much to his mother's relief. In 2011, Elizabeth showed that the crown still had symbolic and diplomatic power when she became the first British monarch to visit the Republic of Ireland since 1911, when all of Ireland was still part of the United Kingdom. As Queen, Elizabeth modernized the monarchy, dropping some of its formalities and making certain sites and treasures more accessible to the public. As Britain and other nations struggled financially, Britain abolished the civil list in 2012, which was a public funding system of the monarchy dating back roughly 250 years. The royal family continues to receive some government support, but the Queen cut back on spending. Also in 2012, Elizabeth celebrated her Diamond Jubilee, marking 60 years as Queen. As part of the Jubilee festivities, a special BBC concert was held on June 4 featuring the likes of Shirley Bassey, Paul McCartney, Tom Jones, Stevie Wonder, 
and Kylie Minogue. Elizabeth was surrounded by family at this historic event, including her husband Philip, son Charles, and grandsons Harry and William. On September 9, 2015, she surpassed her great-great-grandmother Queen Victoria as Britain's longest-ruling monarch, who reigned for 63 years. Despite the occasional call to step aside for Charles, Elizabeth remained steadfast in her royal obligations as she passed her 90th birthday in 2016. She continued making more than 400 engagements per year, maintaining her support of hundreds of charitable organizations and programs. On February 6, 2017, the Queen celebrated 65 years on the throne, the only British monarch to ever celebrate her Sapphire Jubilee. The date also marks the anniversary of the death of her father. The Queen chose to spend the day quietly at Sandringham, her country estate north of London, where she attended a church service. In London, there were royal gun salutes at Green Park and at the Tower of London to mark the occasion. The Royal Mint also issued eight new commemorative coins in honor of the Queen's Sapphire Jubilee. Later that year, the monarchy took what was considered a major step toward transitioning to the next generation. On November 12, Charles handled the traditional Remembrance Sunday duty of placing a wreath at the Cenotaph War Memorial, as the Queen watched from a nearby balcony. In August 2019, Elizabeth made a rare intrusion into political matters when she agreed to a request by Prime Minister Boris Johnson to suspend Parliament until October 14, less than three weeks before Britain's planned departure from the European Union. In 2022, the nation celebrated Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee Year. Another milestone for the monarchy, it marked her 70 years on the throne. Relationship with Prime Ministers Prime Minister Winston Churchill and Queen Elizabeth II, circa 1955. Elizabeth had 15 prime ministers placed into power during her reign, with the Queen and PM having a weekly, confidential meeting. Elizabeth also met about a quarter of all the U.S. presidents in history, most recently receiving Joe Biden for a state visit in June 2021. She enjoyed a father-figure relationship with the iconic Winston Churchill and was later able to loosen up a bit and be somewhat informal with labor leaders Harold Wilson and James Callaghan. In contrast, she and Margaret Thatcher had a very formal, distant relationship, with the PM tending to be a grading lecturer to the Queen on a variety of issues. Tony Blair saw certain concepts around the monarchy as somewhat outdated, though he did appreciate Elizabeth making a public statement after the death of Princess Diana. Later, conservative leader David Cameron, who was Elizabeth's fifth cousin removed, enjoyed a warm rapport with the Queen. He apologized in 2014 for revealing in a conversation that she was against the Scottish referendum to seek independence from Great Britain. Theresa May was described as being tight-lipped about Brexit plans to leave the European Union, with a rumor circulating that Elizabeth was perturbed over not being informed about future exit strategies. Two days before her death, Elizabeth welcomed her final prime minister, Liz Truss, at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. The September 6, 2022, meeting was her final act as monarch. Threats to Queen Elizabeth and the royal family Elizabeth worked tirelessly to protect the image of the monarchy and to prepare for its future, but she saw the monarchy come under attack during her lifetime. The once revered institution weathered a number of storms, including death threats against the royal family. In 1979, Elizabeth suffered a significant personal loss when Lord Mountbatten, her husband's uncle, died in a terrorist bombing. Mountbatten and several members of his family were aboard his boat off the west coast of Ireland when the vessel exploded on August 27. He and three others, including one of his grandsons, were killed. The Irish Republican Army, which opposed British rule in Northern Ireland, took responsibility for the attack. In June 1981, Elizabeth herself had a dangerous encounter. She was riding in the Trooping the Colour, a special military parade to celebrate her official birthday when a man in the crowd pointed a gun at her. He fired, but fortunately, the gun was loaded with blanks. Other than receiving a good scare, the Queen wasn't hurt. Elizabeth had an even closer call the following year when an intruder broke into Buckingham Palace and confronted her in her bedroom. When the press got wind of the fact that Prince Philip was nowhere to be seen during this incident, they speculated about the state of the royal marriage. Family Scandals and Losses 
The marriage of Elizabeth's son Charles to Diana made headlines for years before the couple announced their separation in 1992, followed by their formal divorce in 1996. In the wake of Diana's death in a Paris car crash on August 31, 1997, Elizabeth experienced intense media scrutiny. Her incredibly popular ex-daughter-in-law had been called the People's Princess. The Queen was at her Balmoral estate in Scotland with Charles and his sons with Diana, Prince William and Prince Harry, at the time. For days, Elizabeth remained silent while the country mourned Diana's passing, and she was sharply criticized for her lack of response. Stories circulated that the Queen didn't want to give Diana a royal funeral, which only fueled public sentiment against the monarch. Nearly a week after Diana's death, Elizabeth returned to London and issued a statement on the late princess. Elizabeth also initially objected to the relationship between her son Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles. Charles and Camilla had dated years before he met his family, but the relationship ended under family pressure, only to resume during Charles and Diana's marriage. Known to be a stickler for ceremony and tradition, she eventually showed signs of softening her stance over the years. When Charles and Camilla wed in 2005, Elizabeth and Prince Philip didn't attend the civil ceremony but attended a religious blessing and held a reception in their honor at Windsor Castle. In 1992, another of Elizabeth's children, Prince Andrew, ended up in the tabloids after photos emerged of his wife, Sarah Ferguson, and another man engaged in romantic activity. The couple divorced soon after, along with the dissolution of Charles's and Andrew's marriages princess and divorced her husband Mark Phillips that year. More bad news came when a fire broke out at Windsor Castle in November. The 15-hour blaze destroyed 115 rooms. Though it only consumed two pieces of art from the Queen's valuable private collection. The year became known as her Annus Horribilis. After the start of the 21st century, Elizabeth experienced two great losses. She said goodbye to both her sister, Margaret, and her mother in 2002, the same year she celebrated her golden jubilee that marked her 50th year on the throne. Margaret, known for being more of an adventurous soul than other royals and who was barred from marrying in early love, died in February after suffering a stroke. Only a few weeks later, Elizabeth's mother died at Royal Lodge on March 30 at the age of 101. In November 2017, the media reported the Queen had some $13 million invested in offshore accounts. The news came following the leak of the so-called Paradise Papers to a German newspaper, which shared the documents with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. The Duchy of Lancaster, which holds assets for the Queen, confirmed that some of its investments were overseas accounts, but insisted they were all legitimate. Also in 2017, the former owner of the lingerie company Rigby and Peller, which had serviced Elizabeth for more than 50 years, wrote a tell-all autobiography that included some of her experiences with the royal family. Although the author insisted that the book doesn't contain anything naughty, the Queen responded in early 2018 by revoking Rigby and Peller's royal warrant. In 2019, Prince Andrew was forced to step down from public duties, following a media firestorm. Andrew had courted years of scandal surrounding his controversial business pursuits and friendship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Just weeks later, in January 2020, the family again found themselves in the spotlight, following the bombshell decision by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, to step away from their roles as senior royals. Hobbies For much of her life, the Queen surrounded herself with dogs. She was especially known for her love of corgis, owning more than 30 descendants of the first corgi she received as a teenager, until the death of the final one, Willow, in 2018. Elizabeth was also a horse enthusiast who bred thoroughbreds and attended racing events for many years. Not one for the spotlight, Elizabeth liked quiet pastimes. She enjoyed reading mysteries, working on crossword puzzles, and reportedly, even watching wrestling on television. Death and Funeral Queen Elizabeth II died peacefully at her Balmoral estate in Scotland on September 8, 2022, at 3.10 p.m. local time. She was 96 years old. Her official cause of death was old age, according to her death certificate. 
The public was first aware of the Queen's ill health earlier that day when Buckingham Palace issued its statement around 12.30 p.m. that said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. Soon, members of the royal family began traveling to see the Queen. At the time of her death, Prince Charles and Camilla, as well as Princess and were at the castle. William, Harry, Andrew, Edward, and Sophie arrived later in the evening. Kate Middleton didn't travel to say her final goodbyes, citing the recent start of the school year for her children. Meghan Markle was also absent. Her death was publicly announced at 6.30 p.m. After, newly minted King Charles issued a statement that said, The death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family. We mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much-loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms, and the Commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. During this period of mourning and change, my family and I will be comforted and sustained by our knowledge of the respect and deep affection in which the Queen was so widely held. The funeral of Queen Elizabeth II was held on September 19, 2022. The imperial state crown and a handwritten note from King Charles rested on her coffin. On September 14, Elizabeth's coffin traveled from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall by horse-drawn carriage and lay in state for four days. The day of her state funeral, September 19, was declared a bank holiday. The funeral was held at Westminster Abbey and ended with two minutes of silence, observed there and throughout the United Kingdom. President Joe Biden, First Lady Jill Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron, and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau were among the dozens of world leaders and 2,000 total people in attendance. Millions more watched or listened in, the funeral was broadcast on TV and radio, and streamed on YouTube. Elizabeth's pony and her corgis, Muick and Sandy, watched the procession, as did tens of thousands of people. A private burial came later that day. Elizabeth was buried with Prince Philip at the King George VI Memorial Chapel, quotes, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. 1992 is not a year I shall look back on with undiluted pleasure. In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. When life seems hard, the courageous do not lie down and accept defeat, instead, they are all the more determined to struggle for a better future. Discrimination still exists. Some people feel that their own beliefs are being threatened. Some are unhappy about unfamiliar cultures. They all need to be reassured that there is so much to be gained by reaching out to others, that diversity is indeed a strength and not a threat. Grief is the price we pay for love. Thank <laughs> you.